Good morning. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you all this morning. Um, we are still uh, maybe less than a decade into the advent of, of uh, international Islamic financings, uh, financings of a cross-border nature. And as fits, as is befitting a, an area of, of development which is actually still in its infancy, there's still uh, much to learn and much incomplete understanding as well as misunderstanding um, in Islamic finance. And, and the purpose of, of forums like this, um, in my view, in, in part is to help actually uh, dispel some of those incomplete or misunderstandings and to, to bring people together to, to learn from each other. So we look forward to uh, your questions in the course of the day during the panels, uh, panel discussions for, during which we will provide time for questions. Um, and uh, we'll try to get our uh, panelists to be as responsive as possible to, to, to your particular questions. Um, I would just ask as a logistical matter that um, in order to give people more opportunity to ask questions, when you do ask questions, you do so in, in a, as, a, as brief a manner as possible. Um, and we'll also encourage our panelists to answer questions in as brief a manner as, as possible so we get more of them done. Um, with that, um, I'll turn it back over to Brian and we look forward to spending the day with you. Thank you, Human. One other ho housekeeping matter, with some of the, the slides that you see today, um, I understand that uh, Yufana will be making them available. So I know later, uh, shortly, we'll be speaking as well. So if they're not in your binders, no worries. Yufana will be making arrangements post-conference to make sure that you get whatever materials here for your own, for your own record. So with that, I'll ask um, Adan to introduce the, the first uh, panel. The, uh, the first panel uh, we'll have today is the scope of the North American Islamic finance industry and specifically discussing the capital markets. I'd like to invite to the podium our two esteemed guests, Sheikh Yaqubi and Reverend King, please. I always like to use the, uh, the, the pulpit because it uh, makes me feel comfortable, makes me feel at home, <laughs> being a, a, a pulpiteer. Now, yesterday morning, I left you with a, a, a simple story which simply pointed out that, and, and this, is, this is true, I believe, of all religious faiths, if we know how to access it, we have an infallible guide. I had an interesting conversation with an engineer on the subway on the way here today, and he uh, is in structural engineering. I told him about some of the things that I've been involved with. And when we first met, he was like this. After we talked, we had almost a half an hour to talk by the time, in fact, his, his office is not far from here. He wanted more information. He wanted to know where to find out about this, how to get involved. So we've we have to, this has been mentioned over and over again, we have to get the message out. I put up a website, put up a thread on a website, make a note of this, will you, will, will, will you please? Ragingdebate.com, just as simple as that. It's a very popular debate about economics and politics what, and what's going on in the USA today, and I'm one of the featured writers on the website. And I put up a, put up a, a thread which was entitled, Ufana, 
Usury Free Association of North America, Justice, Peace, and Muslim Banking and the Muslim Banking System. Just, Justin Ryans, by the way, is the uh, sponsor of the, uh, this website, R-I-N-E-S, J-U-S-T-I-N, Justin Ryans. If you Google on his name, I'm sure you'll find out a lot about him. And he's involved with a lot of people in the financial world that would increase our connections with raising and getting, getting to that capital which you people are talking about. And immediately, just not long after I, I posted a thread, gave my opinion, there were seven responses back. And here is one of them, which illustrates what I just said. Usury free, also known as, this is from a correspondence from a writer named Lacour, L-A-C-O-U-R, it shows a picture of her. Uh, usury free, some of, the, some of the comments, by the way, were very sarcastic, but this is just gently sarcastic. Usury free, AKA interest free banking, is, is an interesting, and in brackets, grown idea that many would welcome. <laughs> Sounds like a contradiction here. Not sure doing it under the aegis of Sharia would be so welcome, though, nor should it be. Wow. I mean, if you do interest-free banking, it doesn't matter whether it's done by a Christian bank or a Muslim bank or a Jewish bank. If it's interest-free banking, it's under the law. So we need to, we need to get this point across. And here's, here are a, a, a copies of the comments that just came back immediately from my posting that thread. Now, Omar asked me to especially refer to Jesus and the cleansing of the temple. Why did he do it? Wow, I'm, 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 if I had the time, I'd write a book on this. If, if, I'm more of a speaker than a writer. If any of you know any writers out there would be glad to sit down and sort of dialogue with me, I'd be glad to put it on paper. But the cleansing of the temple is very, very significant. It happened, uh, it happened in memorial, by the way. When did it happen last? Does anyone know? What day do we celebrate? in the Christian world as the cleansing of the temple. How many know? Nobody? Isn't it interesting? It's called Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. And the little children come in church waving their palms and they haven't got a clue that Jesus, when he did that, was laying his life on the line. And incidentally, if you read John's Gospel, it happened at the beginning of his ministry. If you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it happened at the end of his ministry, which means it bookends his ministry. And he probably did it several times all the way through his ministry as well. Don't tell me that Jesus wasn't interested in politics and economics. And what happened just before he made this move? John begins with a beautiful poem about in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the idea of things. You know, everything begins with an idea. And read that beautiful poem in the first chapter of John. Then his cousin, John, assigns him and recognizes him as the Messiah. And then he goes, then he appoints four disciples and they go to a wedding. It's called the Wedding of Cain of Galilee. And this is all symbolic of new beginnings. How will this young couple find the economics to live together happily and have a wonderful life? And Jesus adds spice, and I, I know the, uh, the Muslim will kind of disagree at this and groan at this, but Jesus adds spice to the party by creating the best wine. <laughs> the miracle at Cana of Galilee. Now listen to this. <clears throat> 